One of the other ones we, we tend to come across, and I think we've caught it a few times, we get into wiring. Now, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. wiring comes in a lot of forms. Uh, 1945 uh, was, was kind of a big uh, benchmark year because we outlawed th something called knob and tube. Now, knob and tube was a real fun stuff. There's our knobs, there's our tubes, separate wires, very frail, very brittle, very thin wire. Uh, when that got outlawed, this stuff came into play right here. Mm -hmm. Can now, we hold the knob and tube up? Yeah, actually? of course. Because this is something when people always ask me, is it knob and tube? It's so identifiable because it is actually like a knob with the tube. G right? Generally, you'll, you'll so, find at least some of it. And you'll find it running along the, yeah, now, in the basement. Usually this is our ungrounded it. wiring that followed knob and tube. So after knob and tube was outlawed, this stuff came into play from about 1945 to give or take 1965 before we started to get into our more modern wiring. Now what do you see Justin? What is the difference maker here? What's missing? It's the third wire. The third wire, that ground wire. That's because this wiring is actually ungrounded. So the wiring itself is perfectly safe. The wiring itself is fine. It's copper. It's of, a, of a, an appropriate gauge. It's well sheathed. There's no issues there. The issue is that third prong of the plug you insert into the wall, that's a ground. And that ground is meant to take overflows and manage surges. If that protection's not there, whatever you're plugging in is now left out in the wind and up to the uh, possibility of an overload. The grounding protection is what grants that. This is uh, something we're going to find a lot, especially in those homes built in the 50s and early 60s. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, people are going to get very concerned and say, well, I can't buy a house with that. 